Hello and welcome. This is Ashraf Jandali, and this is the second episode of Pause Process with me. Today we will be working on this image that looks a little bit flat. So let's see what we can do with that image. So let's get started. Alright, in this image, as you can see, okay, it's not really a very, you know, like perfect position or perfect, perfect composition, but I just have some stuff that I want to discuss with you guys. Now, as you can see, there is some kind of flatness in the image that we can fix uh, inside uh, Lightroom. There are some tricks that I want to show you, uh, which are really some basic tri tricks in, in Photoshop. So in this episode, we will be working on Photoshop as well as Lightroom. So, as usual, as I showed you in the previous uh, episode, uh, we will start by enabling the profile correction and remove the chromatic abbreviation. That's the first thing that we really start with. And then I like to, uh, you know, try the camera landscape, which seems to be having a more kind of um, uh, you know, uh, saturation and the colors are really boosting and it's making the image a uh, little bit darker which adding more contrast and there is the camera standard which I like more in this image. So I will be going with the camera uh, standard and then I will start by adding uh, or even, you know, playing with the highlights because I want to get more out of the sky, you know, get, have more drama in the sky. Uh, the shadows, because in here there is no much of details which you can see under the rock, so I will be changing or increasing the uh, shadow. Just when I start seeing some uh, details, I will stop. I don't really need to go all the way like that. Uh, it's not really interesting for me. So I like to, at least when I see some, you know, uh, details under the rock, I, I, I normally stop because in most of the cases, as I told you last time, the shadow, if you increase it all the way up, you will introduce more noise to the image. Now it's time to play with the white. So I will, you know, press the Alt uh, or Option and then I will increase uh, the white until I will see some white, uh, you know, a dot, not a color, but a white dot like that. Then I will stop. And then I will go with the black and click on the black by pressing as well the Alt and then moving the slider. I'll go a little bit further where I will see more of the black spots. Now, until now, that's fair enough. This is what I have that was before and this is after. Still, we'll require more from this image. Now, mainly I have the sky, which I really need to have more drama. And I need to, you know, make this or oh, this texture texture of the rocks really to pop up more. And that itself, I will be doing it inside uh, Photoshop. But before that, let me go inside the details. I have to zoom in 100% by clicking on the, you know, screen. And I will be going in a place that it used to be dark. That itself. I will be checking the noise because mainly the noise will be introduced in these areas. So I will grab the uh, luminance and from the amount of, uh, you know, um, uh, noise that is available right now, I feel it's like something around 15, uh, you know, uh, it's it should be more than enough to be able to remove the amount of noise that is there. So that should be uh, fine. and. Uh, sharpness I can increase it since I've uh, you know made 15 as the luminance the um, you know the the equation that I learned is that it's 100 minus the amount of luminance it's not really something standard but you can you know try doing it if you find like nothing artificial happening to the image you can go with that so 100 minus 15 that will give me 70 uh, or even 85 
so I can you know somehow go through 80 I don't like to go that much because as you can see now uh, in the rock you know the sharpness is not really giving me a good uh, you know um, uh, you know good shape so I uh, I normally in decrease it a little bit so I will go with 80 with that that's that's fine and I don't want the sharpness to happen all over the image so I will be coming to the masking I will you know uh, press the alt and move the masking whatever is gonna be white is gonna be sharpened and whatever is gonna be black is not gonna have any kind of sharpening so I want the sharpening to happen on the texture or the edges sorry of the rocks so that should be fine this amount should be fine and then I will release so the sharpening is gonna happen only on the edges of uh, this rock and this is it that's what I'm gonna uh, you know have and as I showed you last time as well in the saturation of the blue in the camera calibration I like to increase the saturation that will add some kind of nice colors uh, you know in in most of the cases somehow uh, you know to the image so I like to you know play with that saturation it will give me a nice effect but even after doing all of that still I have something missing in the image and that's why I will be going to Photoshop so you click on edit edit in and then you choose edit in Adobe Photoshop so Photoshop is going to open and that image will be converted from uh, you know a raw file to something that uh, most probably you know I did the setting to be TIFF file so it will be converted right now that's what's really happening right now it's a conversion from a raw file to a TIFF file that Photoshop can understand and we can work on it so you know that's the problem with the D800 the file is very big like it's around 76 megabytes so definitely it's gonna take time now the image is there now what I want to do I want to add more drama to the sky now the way I do it I have the image in here as a layer and I will be coming to uh, you know this icon which looks like a, a half uh, circle so when I click on it I will be getting the adjustment layers and I will be using this time the curves now the thing that I'm gonna use in the curves uh, is the uh, hand tool and I will be looking you know on the on the on the clouds because I want to brighten the uh, you know the clouds and I want to darken the sky see what effect is gonna have so I I am not going to go oh, by the way look when when I move that you know eyedropper you will find a circle represented on the you know uh, on that curve so wh wherever I'm, I'm having the the eyedropper that's gonna show me which you know uh, point it's it's on the on the uh, curve so right now I want to have somewhere in here I don't want to have it the very bright one because it's not gonna help me I want to have this part which is here to be more brightened so I will increase it just a little bit like so okay and now everything became uh, you know bright so then I will come at the place where the sky is and I will click and drag down because I want to make it more darker so in in, in such way I have brightened the clouds and darkened the sky so when you darken something it will be more saturated so that's why now we can see more blue in the sky and the clouds became more brighter look at the sky right now this is before and after before and after so we have more contrast happening in the sky and more drama so what I need to do right now is that I want this effect to be on the sky only so the way to do it is that I will grab the selection uh, tool which is the uh, quick selection tool and with a decent size I will click and then I will move until I will cover all the area which is related to the sky okay and then I will release make sure that you have the auto enhance 
selected because it will make the edges look, look much better. And once I have the selection, I will come to select and then go to modify and then feather. Now, since I have a very high resolution image, one uh, you know, pixel of feathering is more than enough. This will guarantee that there is a very slight transition in the selection. We don't have sharp edges. So those edges will be feathered in a different word. It will be blurred just a little bit. So the transition will be looking nice. And then I'll say, okay. And after that, that selection, I want to convert it to become part of the uh, mask, which is in here. So I will make sure that the mask is selected and I will click on command or control uh, delete. So that will replace the selection with a black, uh, you know, color. I will deselect by pressing, I mean, that selection, I will deselect it by pressing the command or control D that will remove the selection. And now I want the opposite of what happened on the mask. So I will press the command or control I so that gave me the opposite of that. So now this area became black and the sky became white as a mask. So what have happened? The effect will appear on the sky and it will not appear on the rocks. So this is before and this is after. Very slight change, which is more than enough. The second thing that I want to do is grab a level. Now in the levels, what I need to do, I want to have more details being appearing from uh, you know the, that texture of the rocks so I want more details to pop out so all I have to do I will grab this area which is the white I will just move it to the left so the image as an all will become brighter now I'm looking only at the rocks I'm not looking anywhere I want to reach to a place you know where uh, you know, the brightness of the, uh, you know, highlighted area in the rocks, you know, it, it's, it's more, uh, you know, brighter. So somewhere like that. And then with the uh, gray, uh, you know, slider, I will grab it to the opposite uh, direction, which is to the right, like so. So that with, with what, what I have done is that you can see I've increased the details of that, uh, you know, rock texture. So this is before and after. Just look at the rocks. This is before and after. So in such kind of way, we have increased the details in the rock. But what I want to do is that to make this kind of effect in certain places, I don't want it to be all over the image. So that mask, I will convert it so it will become totally black. So I'll press the command or control I. So this effect became hidden. Unless if I will grab a brush, I will increase the size of the brush and make sure that the brush you are using having hardness of zero. So now I will, you know, uh, make an opacity of 40 by pressing the number four. If I press number six, that will make it 60. So I'll press number four. So the opacity will become 40. And then slowly I will start adding the, this, you know, those, uh, or I mean this effect in some certain area in the image. So what I will be doing, I am tapping on my mouse like so. You can hear the sound. Okay. In some areas, because I want to introduce that effect on some places of the image. I don't want it to be as an oval overall everywhere. Okay. So I want, you know, the areas that I want the viewer to see in my image. Uh, so mainly, you know, whatever details are there, that's exactly the place where the eye is going to uh, look at. So, uh, you know, try to, um, you know, add some effect and drama to your image that will have more you know, interest in, in viewing the image. So that's what exactly I'm doing right now. Just slowly I'm adding the effect that I've add on that level uh, layer. And make sure that, you know, the areas which should be like somewhere here, you know, it's, it's in, in the shadow that this effect should not be too much, you know, because mainly the sun is not really going to, you know, appear over there because whatever I'm doing right now, it's brightening. Uh, you know, this area. So 
that's what exactly I want to reach to. So if you look at, just a second, bear with me. If you look at the before, this is before and after, before and after. So very small uh, effect will really add more drama to the image. So let's see exactly what we have done. This was before, look at the sky and the rocks, and this was after. So small thing will really add a nice effect to your image. So if I look at the mask that I have created uh, for this effect, if I press the Alt or Control, uh, sorry, the Alt or Option, on, then I will click on the mask. This is exactly the mask that I created. That's how it looks like. So the effect is going to appear only on the white area. So that's where the effect is going to appear. By pressing Alt or Option and click again on the mask, the image is going to appear back. Now, let's consider that this is exactly that I want to do in Photoshop. I don't want more, but still one more thing. I just want to guarantee that there are no sensor spots in the image because uh, that can happen in your image. You create a new layer by pressing the that paper which is bent from the left down. That will create a new layer. Make sure when you uh, use the uh, uh, you know spot healing brush that the uh, sample all layers is is being selected you zoom in 100% by pressing command or control 1 and now I will be viewing the image as an overall now I can see there is a spot in here you have a size which is re relevant to the size of the spot click and boom there is no more spot and try to go all over your image now there are some areas that they are not really a spot but they may look as a spot i will also try to remove them now i'll try to find out if something else is there because as you know spots will degrade your image even you if your image is really nice and by the way it's good also to zoom in and see the edges where we have done our selection and make sure that there is no halo there is nothing artificial everything looks fine so always zoom 100 percent to your image to make sure everything is fine so then you press the command zero that will zoom uh, you know out and that's what i want from my image so all i have to do right now is press the Control s or command s that will save uh, the work that we have done and what's gonna happen right now whatever it's going to be saved it's going to be saved back to Lightroom so we started with Lightroom and we will end inside Lightroom so once it is saved as I can see from here it is saved and then I'll press the uh, you know or I will close uh, you know Photoshop because I'm done with it now as you can see the image is coming inside Lightroom so this is my image what I will have I will have in here the image that uh, came from Photoshop and this is the image which is originally inside uh, Lightroom and you know once you click on it on that number the old image will go under the, or the, the, the second image which we created as you know kind of stacking if you click on the number then the original image will come there so if you look at the difference between them this is how it looked like before we take it to uh, Photoshop and this is after we have taken it to Photoshop so slight slight changes will really make a big effect so I hope that you have learned something today once again please do share the video if you find it informative and it may help someone else also when you like you will support me so i can keep on continue doing these tutorials and you know try to offer you whatever knowledge i have with me so thank you for watching and have a nice day